I'm Jeremy Colvin and I work at Shoshin Farm. It is a community development site in northern Zambia. We focus a lot on on relationship with our neighbors. That is our number one focus. Uh, developing relationship in such a way that we can then speak into people's lives. We believe that unless we have deep relationship with people, we are unable to make lasting impacts in their lives. And so that is our number one focus. And from there, what we hope to impact is people's physical lives to help them live better, nutritionally better, health-wise better, um, economically better, educationally better. Um, and, through the, and through all of that, our number one goal is sharing the love of Jesus Christ. This started with me a long time ago. Um, I was actually down around the kindergarten first grade level. Um, there are three distinct things that happened at that time that uh, influenced my, my love for people and my desire to serve people. One was a song during that time. Uh, it was called Thank You, and I can't remember the artist, but the gist of the song is that he finds himself in heaven and people that he kind of knew and people that he didn't know at all were coming and thanking him for the services that he had given to the Lord. Um, everything from giving a little extra in the offering to some missionary, um, to serving in Sunday school, uh, to, to other random things that he didn't know impacted people, but in the end made an, a, an eternal impact in their lives. The second thing that really impacted me was Jesus' parable where he, t where he welcomes people into heaven, and he tells them, uh, welcome in, thank you for feeding me when I was in prison, thank you for clothing me when I was naked, thank you for uh, giving me food, thank you for helping me on the side of the road. And all the people say to him, Lord, when did we do that for you? And he says to them, whenever you did this for any of your neighbors, you did this for me. And so that was a huge thing that even at a young age, I remember really liking that story a lot. And one of the most significant things was in first grade, learning an acronym. And the acronym is JOY. Um, and if you want to have real joy, you have Jesus first in your life, and then you put others second, and then you put yourself last. And from that point on, I, I strove to live by that acronym and so that I would have real joy. And I serve Jesus Christ um, by serving others, and then I have joy. And in later years, that was emphasized on with when I understood more and grasped the concept of what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. The fact that he saved me from so much, um, not only hell, but he saved me from a life. I know that without Jesus Christ in my life, I have the potential to be a very naughty person <laughs> and, and do stupid things and do things that I would not be proud of and do things that would hurt me and hurt others. And it's because of that love that he has for me and, and the act of service that he did for me that I want to try to return that love to him and return that service to Jesus Christ. And so I do that by serving others. I was drawn to Africa through the idea that a lot of people, especially in America, but in Europe as well, um, have a lot of possibilities for help. I worked at some of those places in America and I helped people there. And as I worked there and I looked at all the possibilities that people had to, to be served, 
um, I realized I I realized that people in other places around the world, like in Africa, did not have those opportunities. That is the same reason why now that I am in Africa, I do not stay near the city areas. Um, we are rural development, and we are out in places that most NGOs, most nonprofit organizations do not want to go because it's too far away from their central base. And so we go out into those places because those people do not have the opportunities available to them to be helped like other people do. And so that is why I go to those places. And we serve them by trying to become one of them. It's my heart's desire that everyone would learn to serve others. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that all of us have to give up where we are and go and dedicate our lives somewhere new. Um, but it does mean that each one of us needs to open our eyes and look around at the opportunities that are in front of us. Um, I, I don't care where you live in the world or whether it's poor or rich or who's in your life, there are opportunities to serve people. And I, I, it's my heart's desire to encourage everyone to serve people. You don't know what you can do through that. It's, it's amazing. I, I talk to a lot of people, and especially to youth, I tell them, that every single one of us, that every single encounter you have, every single person you meet, every single interaction you have with someone influences. Some of them influence big, some of them influence small, some of them influence negative, some of them influence positive, but there is always some kind of influence. And so my big thing is we need to have positive influence. It doesn't mean that you have to go out there and flip a community upside down. You don't even have to go out to one person and change them overnight. That's not the goal. The goal is to have positive influence in people's lives. And I really believe that when we take our eyes off of us first and we put them onto others, that is where that starts.